from stories across the world of stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Nitya Sarachandra. And I'm Bharaka Dharachi. First, a look at the stories making the headlines this evening. Sri Lanka has been acclaimed for continuous maintenance of a free and democratic election process. Sajid Premadasa reiterates that he has been entrusted with citizens' power instead of family power. The Election Commission instructs all media institutions should remain unbiased during the election period. Sri Lanka has been removed from the grey list of anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism. For those and other stories, Foreign Minister of the Netherlands, Stef Bloch, says that Sri Lanka has been subjected to strong appreciation by the democratic countries of the world due to its ability to continuously maintain a free and democratic election system in the midst of numerous challenges. The visiting Netherlands Foreign Minister made these remarks when he met President Maitripala Sirisena at the official residence of the President this morning. Attention has been focused at depth at the meeting on the bilateral relations and regional issues. The President has said that this occasion that he will remain impartial in the upcoming election. He further said that he would guarantee that elections would be conducted in an extremely peaceful and democratic manner devoid of corruption. The President also said that the police and the tri forces remain under his control during the election period and that he has instructed relevant groups to dedicate themselves for an unbiased and independent election by safeguarding law and order in the country. The President has also appreciated the assistance extended by Netherlands for the development program in Sri Lanka. Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, reiterates that all government and private media institutions should act in an unbiased manner during the period of the presidential election. He made these remarks at a media briefing of the Elections Commission today. Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahinda Deshapriya, said that impartiality should have to be displayed by every media institution, especially in the state media institutions. He added that they reiterate once again that it is extremely important to act in an unbiased manner. The Elections Commission chairman further said that they will take legal measures against state media which fail to act in this manner. He also said that they want to inform the private media that the frequencies are owned by the people. The chairman added that the frequencies have been leased on temporary basis by the state, therefore they have to be used in a fair manner. Mahinda Desha Priya further said that if the civilians reported to the Elections Commission, to the Commission in Charge of Media Control and to the Commission in Charge of Regularization, they as the Elections Commission will uphold the position that frequencies are available for the citizens. Chairman of the Elections Commission has reiterated that a security program should have to be prepared until the receipt of polling cards by the postal voters. <laughs> Chairman of the Elections Commission, Mahinda Desha Priya, said that there are more than 600,000 postal votes have been issued and they are now at the post offices of the postal department. He further said that envelopes containing postal polling cards will be sent by post from next Monday to the government offices, police stations, army camps and SLTB depots. Yet other they requested from all returning officials and heads of institutions, officials in charge of the mail, to prepare a program to hand these documents in person to the returning officials. These envelopes should be kept safely and unopened opened until the 31st of October, yet that these envelopes should be opened only in the presence of the voter. The chairman has stressed that it is the responsibility of the officials and heads of institutions to guarantee safety of the postal voting procedure. Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, reiterates that the rival candidate and his family only possess monetary power and family power, but the power of the citizenry lies within him. He was addressing a public rally in Rattata public grounds in Matale today. Sajid Premadasa was warmly welcomed at the meeting. A group of activists of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna have joined the joined to extend support for the victory of the presidential candidate of the NDF, Sajid Premadasa, at the forthcoming presidential election. I'm 
मैं अवस्था में प्रकाश करना Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe was among the crowd at another public rally held in this connection in Laggal a new town in Matale today. Now, presidential candidate Minister Sajid Premadasa says that maximum opportunities will be provided for the private entrepreneurs to strengthen the economy through the introduction of a new state financial policy. Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front made these remarks clarifying his economic policies at a seminar of entrepreneurs in Colombo yesterday. Heads of frontline business enterprises, economic analysts and politicians were present at the meeting. Presidential candidate Sajid Premadas has also pointed out that the business sector is able to extend high contributions to strengthen the economy of the country. I have a mind of my own and I believe that I am equipped with basic economic knowledge both in the macro and micro sector. And if you do want to test my economic knowledge, I will allow you to do so. So don't, don't think of me as a politician who is totally and absolutely dependent on economic advisors. I think my erstwhile uh, rival will certainly have to depend on a lot of advisors because he has, uh, he has uh, little knowledge of economics and uh, practical politics. And I firmly believe that we have to streamline the various regulations, make it very simple and ensure that regulations do not act as an obstacle for businesses to flourish. So let me reassure everyone in this audience and those who are watching us right now throughout the country, we will have a comprehensive, efficient decision-making process and structure and that process will entail providing the experts, the specialists, those who are capable of becoming partners and stakeholders in the decision-making process, which will result in sound policies being formulated. So we, we shall not have knee-jerk reactions, uh, we shall not have ad hoc decision-making methodologies. Rather, we will be very scientific, we will be very surgical and we will be very focused and task-oriented. Presidential candidate Sajid Premadas also attended a meeting of intellectual professionals yesterday. I revealed one of the members uh, of my team, that's Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca, who will be in charge of defense and law and order the basic premise which guided me in making that appointment was solely and totally based on merit ability and performance that will be the standard by which i will make other appointments the most important sectors of governance please be rest assured that i will strive to establish a meritocratic society where the doers and the performers and those who are capable of attaining standards of the highest of excellence will be recruited, appointed and nurtured in having a governmental process that will ensure lasting prosperity for our motherland. Thank Honorable Sajid Premadas for being here and for a very informative session and for a memorandum of understanding between the presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Gotabe Rajapaksha and the Sri Lanka Freedom Party was signed at the Western Province Aesthetic Institute today. The SLFP has decided recently to extend support to Gotabe Rajapaksha at the presidential election. The memorandum of understanding was signed according to this decision. General Secretary of the SLFP, Dayasri Jayasekara, has signed on behalf of the SLFP and presidential candidate Gotabe Rajapaksha on behalf of the SLPP. 
Leaders of the United People's Freedom Alliance, President of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, Professor G. L. Piris, and other people's representatives were present on this occasion. The SLFP and the SLPP have signed another MOU recently as well. General Secretary of the SLFP, Daya Sirijaya Sekara, said that people of the country have discussed towards politics in the country. He also said that this is a time of finding persons who are able to create a new future to the people. The need of the national forces was that a non-political person should become the president of the country. He added that this hiatus will be, have to be filled. Daya Sirijaya Sekara also said that the SLFP has taken the correct verdict at the correct place. General Secretary of the UPFA Mahinda Maravira said that they were of the view that the support should be extended to a person with a national program who is able to bring the country forward rather than to an empty-minded person. He further said that they have not concluded any talks with any parties. Mahinda Maravira added that support has been extended with a water base of 1.5 million. He further said that the United People's Freedom Alliance support will be extended with the addition of further 17 lakhs and 10,000 votes to the 5 million votes of the Podujana Perumuna. Presidential candidate of the SFPP, Gota Beraj Baksha, said that he wishes to ex express his respect to President Maitri Pala Sirisena for acting in a manner of not breaching confidence. He further said that there is no need for any intimidations in order to carry forward activities in the times ahead. He added that there is no doubt on the policies of the SLFP due to its relationship with their party. He has called upon any SLFPers who has taken a decision based on some cause to join with him. He further said that they should not forget the fact that if they had achieved any victory that was under an SLFP government. Thereafter, a meeting of the district and electorate organizers of the SLFP was also held at this meeting. The program of the SLFP at the presidential election was discussed in depth. Presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna Gotabe Rajapaksha says that the Gampa district will be turned into a centre of education under an administration by him. He was addressing a public meeting in Ragama town. The meeting has been organised. People's representatives of political parties extending support to the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna. Presidential candidate of the SLPP Gotabe Rajapaksha said that the present government has not given any priority to national security. He said that under his government, the intelligence divisions will be activated and a defense program will be implemented. He assured a safe country to the people. Gotabe Rajapaksha further stated that the pride of the gallant soldiers will once again be brought to the front. He added that the economy has been destabilized and development is at a halt. The SLPP presidential candidate also said that youth who are unable to qualify in the ordinary level examinations will be given an industrial and technical education and an employment with a good salary. They will also be given a good training in their fields of activities. He also said that an education center will be set up in the Gampaha town which is affiliated to the Kalanir University. He also said that another objective is to create jobs that enhance the intelligence of the youth. It is a big investment to bring out a generation enriched with high technology in the first year itself of their administration. He also said that they have already shown their skills and that all future plans will have to be presented in a practical manner.
ඇතිවිය වැඩි කර ගැනීමට ඇති අවස්ථාවන් වැඩි කරලා මේ ආර්ථිකයට වැදගත් වෙන ආකාරයේ රැකියාව නිෂ්පාදනය කිරීම හරහා අපිට පුළුවන් ආර්ථිකය ගොඩ ගන්නට අපි මෙන්න මේ හින්ද තමයි අපේ පාලන කාලේ මුල් වසරේදීම අධ්‍යාපනය වෙනුවෙන් තාක්ෂණයෙන් දිනුණු නු පරපුරක් බී කිරීම සඳහා විශාල ආයෝජනයක් අපි යොදනවා මා කෙරේ විශ්වාසය තියන්න අපි වැඩ කරලා පෙන්නපු කණ්ඩායමක් අපි මේ ඉදිරිපත් කරන සැලසුම් සියල්ලම ප්‍රායෝගික ක්‍රියාත්මක කරන්න පුළුවන් සැලසුම් කියලා මතක් කරමින් තමුන් වහන්සේලාට සුබ දවසක් වේවා කෘෂි කර්මය ගැන කතා කරනවා කියනවා මේ පෝර සනාදයේ දින මේ වීර විකස ලීඩර් මහින්ද රාජපක්ෂ සද දේ රයිවල්ස් ඔෆ් ස්ටේට් ඔෆ් ද ෆර්ටිලයිසර් සබ්සිඩි විල් ඕන්ලි බී ප්‍රොවයිඩ් ෆෝර් ද පැඩි කල්ටිවේෂන් දේ වුඩ් නොට් වෙර් ද ක්‍රොප්ස් දට ආ ඉන්ක්ලූඩඩ් ඉන් ඇග්‍රිකල්චර් හි ෆර්දර් සද දට ද ටෙලිවිෂන් ඉස් බීන් යුස්ඩ් ඉන් ඇප්‍රෝප්‍රියට්ලි ජොබ්ස් ආ බීන් ප්‍රොවයිඩ් බයි බ්‍රීචින් ඉලෙක්ෂන් ලෝස් Sri Lanka has been removed from the grey list by the Financial Action Task Force, the global policy setter on anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism. The French based task force has congratulated on the new measures taken by Sri Lanka on financial security. The Financial Action Task Force had been established in 1989. It is an interstate institute that focuses special attention on global financial security. The task force is maintaining two grey lists on countries with inappropriate monetary activity on the international level. The two lists are known as grey and black lists. Sri Lanka was first included in the grey list in the year 2011. By the year 2012, the list has named Sri Lanka as a dangerous state without any commitment for a financial security plan. It has also been pointed out that from the year 2016 onwards, the government of Sri Lanka have followed many steps to establish financial security, acting along with the central bank and other financial institutions. As a result, Sri Lanka was named as a supporting state in 2016. The FATF has announced today Sri Lanka has been removed from the grey list. The economic cost is incalculable, but it is significant and the Department of Commerce estimated that Sri Lanka lost as a result of losing GSP+. In brief, in 2015, Sri Lanka was like a patient gasping for breath in the intensive care unit of a hospital. However, we have nursed the patient. He is now walking and ready to run. and we are simplifying rules and processes we are moving up in the ease of doing business subsequent to the field visits by the senior officials of the FATA the financial action task force it has also been decided that sri lanka should no longer be in the grey list we were for money laundering and terrorist financing in fact The official announcement remo- removing us from the grey list was made this morning in Paris at the headquarters of FATA. Looking to the future. The policy on national unity of the National People's Power was unveiled today. Presidential candidate Anura Kumar Desanayake presided over the event in Nigambo. The policy statement on national unity of the NPP was presented to those present at the meeting including the Mahasangha and clergymen of other religions. <laughs> Presidential candidate of the NPP Anura Kumar Desanayake said that the main topic in the election platform these days are the name boards at the Palali airport. He added that in areas where Sinhalese people reside the Sinhala language has been put in second place and the Tamil language is at the top. This issue has become a mud-slinging topic. He also said that people in the country should reject this kind of politics. No room should be left for any extremist concepts. Sri Lanka should accept the country as a multinational state belonging to every ethnic group. Sinhala 
Presidential candidate Duminda Nagamur says that there has to be a methodology to incorporate the people with the state in order to show their responses to the policies of the country. He was addressing a special meeting in Kadavata yesterday. Presidential candidate of the Frontline Socialist Party, Duminda Nagamur, said that there are crucial problems in front of the working class of the country. He also said that it is important to highlight the problems of the farmers, peasants, professionals, state and private sector employees. There has to be a methodology for the people to get involved in the activities of the state. The new people's democracy is to show their responses to the policies of the country. The Embassy of Italy in Colombo, in partnership with the Ministry of Tourism and the Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau, has organized a conference on the Mediterranean diet and on Italian food. The theme of the event is aligned to that of the World Food Day 2019, which is healthy and sustainable diets. The event was conducted by a world-renowned Italian chef. Chef Rubio is a former semi-professional Italian rugby player and currently he is a world-famous celebrity chef and an international television presenter. He visited Sri Lanka to record a series of TV programs. With the participation of the Italian celebrity chef, the benefits of the Mediterranean diet was examined at a function held in Colombo on Wednesday. The event also witnessed the world premiere screening of the Recipes for Change video, a project funded by UN. The video has been filmed by Chef Rubio in Anuradhapura where he visited a Sri Lankan family and cooked along with them while conveying information on nutritional and sustainability aspects. <laughs> traveling and uh, learning and keeping all the experience for me and then sharing with my customers and my friends and then uh, so go on, someone uh, notice me and then I finish in TV. The aim of the Embassy of Italy in Colombo is to draw attention on the health aspects of the famous Mediterranean diet. Commenting on the occasion, Ambassador of Italy to Sri Lanka and the Maldives, Rita Giuliana Manella said the Embassy of Italy is very much engaged in promoting cultural ties between the two countries. Many Sri Lankans work with Italy because it has so many areas of interest, particularly because of this case. And uh, besides that, <coughs> even other uh, denominations, people go, they like to see what the development is. Italian food and the key of our success well, course, could also be seen to the hospitality. You know, the fact that we like to eat together and be together. And this is very similar to the Sri Lankan attitude to go together with friends, to eat together with friends. So I really think there are so many things in common between our countries and I think this is one of the, one of the many bridges between our cultures. Now, we have reported to you in the past few days of several instances of wild elephants meeting with accidents. In some cases, however, the lives of these animals could not be saved. However, a group of wildlife officials were able to rescue with safety three elephants that met with an accident at dawn yesterday. Ritigala wildlife officials say that they have safely rescued three elephants that fell into an abandoned well in the Vanam Kulama and Moravaka and release them into the forest. A female elephant and her two cows were rescued from the well last night based on information provided by the villagers. A chain of pumpkins was located near the well and it is believed that the elephants fell into the well after eating the harvest of this cultivation. Wildlife officials along with the assistance of the Moravaka police station have safely directed the animals back to the forest. An electric fence has not been set up in order to prevent these freely roaming wild elephants into the village. The villagers request the authorities to focus attention on this problem and to help them protect their crops. A program to clean beaches with tourist attractions in the western province was held recently. The event has been organized by the tourist board in the province. The program got underway from the Valavata beach. 
under the program Beach Beaches from Beerwala to Nigambo is to be cleaned. The program named as Coast to Coast will be implemented as a remedy to the national problem of garbage dumping on beaches and appropriate garbage disposal. That's all the news we have for you tonight. The National News Broadcast will return tomorrow. And until then, a very good night to you all.